Welcome everyone to part four of this Blender tutorial series on how to create this Tatooine environment in Blender. So in the last part, in part three, we made the houses, all the buildings and things, and we put that in the scene. And then we also took these water collectors and we like duplicated them and put them around in the scene as well. And in this part, we're going to be creating some different sci-fi things and adding them to the homestead. So we're going to be making like some sci-fi pipes. We're also going to be modeling like some antennas and we're going to be creating some sci-fi sci-fi boxes and barrels and putting them in the scene. So let's get started. So I'm going to press shift C to center my 3D cursor and then I'll press shift A and we're just going to start by making the sci-fi barrel. So I'm going to go right over here and add a circle and then just press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. I'm just going to press G and Z and bring it up just that we can model it up here. So what I want to do is mirror the barrel because the barrel on the top is going to be the same as the bottom. So I don't have to model both sides. I can just mirror it. So right over here on the modifiers, I'm going to click on add modifier and let's just add the mirror modifier. And then we want to turn off the X axis because we want to turn on the Z axis so it mirrors it up and down. So I'm going to tab into edit mode now and we can press E to extrude Z on the Z axis and just bring that up. And there we go. You can see now it's mirroring it. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and then just press S to scale. We'll bring it down E to extrude and then Z on the Z axis. And then we'll just click to place that. And then I'll press E to extrude S to scale and we'll just bring that up. All right, I'll press E to extrude, Z on the Z axis, bring this up, and then I'll press E again to extrude, Z on the Z axis, and then S to scale, we'll just bring that down. And there we go, that is looking great. Let's just also press F to fill a face in the center there. And because it's mirroring it over, we don't need to model the top and the bottom, we can just model the top and it'll mirror it over. Now we do need to turn on this clipping and that way it's going to connect because if we have the clipping off, it's not gonna connect. So just turn on the clipping right here and then I'll also press G and Z and just kind of bring it down because I don't want the barrel to be quite that big. Now the normals need to be recalculated because you can see the shading is a little bit weird. So in edit mode, just select everything and press shift N and that's going to recalculate the normals. Now I also want to add a bevel, just like all these other objects, we've been adding a lot of bevels. Let's do that for this one. So I'm going to click on add modifier and then let's add the bevel modifier. And then right here, the angle, we're probably gonna need to turn this up just a little bit. And then we can also turn the segments up to like four. And then the amount, I want to bring that down so it's not quite as big, so it's really small there. And then we can just shade this object smooth. All right, so that is the barrel. Pretty simple. Let's just bring this down, maybe just scale it down a little bit. So now let's also make the sci-fi box. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm just going to add a cube. Let's just bring this cube up so we can see it. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I just want to press S to scale and X on the X axis and just kind of bring that up. And that way the box is just a little bit longer. All right, now to make the sci-fi box, it's pretty easy. Um, I'm just gonna press Control B and then I want to scroll down so that there's only one bevel and then I'm just gonna bring that out a little bit. And then I also wanna add a bevel to the bevel. So I'm just gonna press Control B again and just scroll up this time and then just click to place that. So there we go, there's our sci-fi box. It's pretty simple, um, but we will be adding a texture on it to make it look cooler. Now you can see with how big the person is, these are pretty big, so I'm gonna scale them down so they're quite a bit smaller. Something like that I think is a lot better. All right, so let's add the materials onto them as well. So I'm just going to select one of them. We'll go over to the shading tab, and then let's just go into the material preview just so that we can preview this. So I'm gonna click on new here and we can just call these, maybe just call this like sci-fi metal, whatever you wanna call it. And then we're gonna be adding a texture, which I talked about at part one of the tutorial. Links will be in the description if you'd like to download the sci-fi texture that I'll be downloading. So I have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, again, as we talked about at the first part of the tutorial. So I'm just gonna select the principled BSDF and then I'm just going to press Control Shift T. Then just locate to wherever you have your textures. Again, links in the description if you'd like to download these free sci-fi textures. So I'm gonna be using the base color, metallic, normal, and roughness. So when you download them, they might come with a few more, but I'm just gonna be using these four, so just select those four, and then just click on Principled Texture Setup. Now, as you can see, you only added in three of them, and I believe this is because the naming is a little bit different, and so the Node Wrangler doesn't quite like how it's named. Um, so you can see this one, if I just Control Shift and click on this, you can see this one is the base color. This one isn't supposed to go into a metallic. This one needs to go into the base color. And then also, because the base color, it shouldn't be non-color, we need to set it to 
sRGB. And then let's just move this up. So what we need to do now is add in the metallic one as well. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Just kind of bring this down here. And then I'm going to press X to delete that. And then we'll just click on Open. So then again, just locate to wherever the texture is saved. And I'm just going to click on the metallic one. Now this metallic one, it's not adding anything to the base color. So we need to set the color space to non-color data. And then again, we want it to use the same mapping. So we'll just plug this to the vector right here from the mapping. And then the metallic, we need the color to go to the metallic. So then let's just control shift and click on this and then see how it's looking. Now, because we haven't UV unwrapped the objects yet, you can't actually see the texture on them. So we need to UV unwrap them before we UV unwrap it though. I need to go over here to the modifier properties and then this mirror right here, I need to just click on it and then click on apply just so that it's mirrored over and that way the texture won't be mirrored. So now I can click on this one and let's actually go to the materials here and just add the sci-fi metal. And then we're going to click on both of these tab into edit mode. So we are now in the multi object editing and then I'm going to press U and we are going to click on the cube projection. So there we go. And you can see that already looks pretty nice. It already is looking quite good. So if you want to leave that how it is, you can, but we can also play around with the UV mapping to make it look a little bit better. Cause you can see there's like a seam right here and that's not very good. So let's click right over here on the UV editing. And then if you zoom in, here is our UV editing. So I'm just going to press L with my mouse hovered over one of these, and then I can just kind of move it around to see where it is. So let's just move this around. You can see it's just selected like the front part. I want to rotate all of this around. So I'm going to deselect everything and then just press L with my mouse hovered over this to select all of it. And then I can just double tap A over here to make sure they're all selected. Then I can press R to rotate and I'm going to type in nine zero and enter. So it's rotating the UV map by 90 degrees. And then I can also press G to grab and I can kind of move it until you can really start to see those sci-fi textures. So you can also scale it and just move it to how you want. Okay, that is pretty good. So let's do the same thing for this one now. So I'm just going to select everything. Let's just see how we can improve this. So you can see that there is like a cut in here. So you can just kind of like move this until you can't see that. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, but you can't see very much of the other sci-fi stuff. So let me just keep on moving this till it looks good. There we go. That is really cool. So you can see all that sci-fi stuff in there. And I do really like that. All right. So that's going to be good for these two objects. So I can go back to the layout. All right. So now we can just move the barrel and the box around and duplicate them and put them in the scene. So I'm going to press seven for top view and let's just press G to grab. We're going to move this over. And then I just want to select the barrel and I want to move it over here. Just kind of stick it right there, maybe scale it up a little bit and we'll go into the camera view, just kind of see how it looks. So I just want to stick it kind of like right in there in the corner. All right. And then this box right here, I want to kind of make a stack of boxes kind of right behind the door. So let's move this. We can kind of rotate it over a little bit. Just give it a random rotation and then let's duplicate this box, maybe rotate this over a little bit and then I can duplicate it again. We'll give it a random rotation and then also just kind of move this up here. Let's go see it from camera view because it needs to look pretty good from the camera view, obviously, because the camera is the thing that's going to be even looking at it. Maybe rotate this over a little bit. OK, let's see how that's looking. That's good. Now, if I go into render mode, I'm wondering if the depth of field is too high because I think, yeah, I think the depth of field is too high. So right here on the camera, it just looks a little bit too blurred. So if you just click on the camera and then go right over here to the camera settings, the F stop right here, maybe I'm going to turn this up to like a four. I do want there to be a depth of field, but kind of a smaller one. There we go. That is a lot better. So you can start to see a bit of the details in the box. And then let's click on the barrel here. I'm going to press shift D and duplicate it. I just want to put one barrel right here, right there kind of next to that house. And then I want to select one of these boxes. We'll duplicate this and put it kind of right here in front of this house as well. Move it into the sand and then let's add a couple more. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Move this one over here. Maybe just give it a random rotation. All right. Shift D R to rotate. Let's just stick this one over here. Maybe these are just like you know, supplies or maybe like batteries or something. And then I want to select one more of these barrels and I'll just duplicate it and just kind of stick it right up here next to the big dome. And I'll just kind of rotate it maybe so it's slanted over and then just going into the sand a little bit. 
just like that. Okay, go into the camera view, that looks pretty good. And then I also just wanna have one barrel and one box like right over here. So I'll select one barrel and one box and we can press Shift D to duplicate. Go onto the top view and I'm just going to move them over, just kind of stick it next to the like moisture collector and we need to move them up a little bit so they're not going into the sand. And I think I'll put this one kind of behind this. All right, so that's great. That's what I'm gonna do. You could add more if you wanted to or do whatever you want. You could create some more sci-fi assets if you wanted to add them. Um, but what I'm gonna be doing now is adding in the pipes and then also adding the antenna. Let's do the antenna because that's pretty easy and quick to add. So to make the antenna, I'm gonna press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. And then I'll press Shift A and I am going to add a cylinder. Now right over here on the cylinder settings, the vertices, they can just be set to two, that's totally fine. And then let's just scale this down because it shouldn't be quite that big. Let's tap into edit mode and then I'm gonna press three and then click on this face right here. And I'll press G to grab, Z on the Z axis, and we will just bring this up. And then you can press period on the number pad to zoom over to it. I can also press I to inset, inset that down, and then I can press E to extrude and just bring that up. So there we go, there is an antenna. Let's shade this object smooth. And then we can just add a very basic metal material. In fact, we already have this basic metal material right here, so the smooth metal. So what I can do is just click on this, click on it to add a new material and just add the smooth metal. That should be totally fine. All right, let's go to top view and I'm just going to move this over. So I just wanna place a few antennas here and there on the houses. So I'm just going to put this one right here. Let's go into the camera view, see how that looks in the camera. I'm gonna duplicate this and scale it down so that we kind of have two of them. I think that looks pretty cool. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one again. And this one, I'm gonna put on the side of this house. So the square house right here, I'll just move it down right behind the square house, kind of sticking out right there. And if you wanted to, you could maybe add them on the dome. If you wanted to, I am good with that. All right, so now we just need to make the pipes. So again, I'm gonna press Shift C to center the 3D cursor. I'll press Shift A. And for this, we are going to add a cylinder. And then let's just press period to zoom into it. So I just wanna press G and Z and bring it up. And then I'll press one to go to the front view. So we can tab into edit mode, press one to go to the vertex select and we can go into the wireframe. I'm just gonna press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select this and then I'll press G and Z and bring it down. So now we can press I to inset, E to extrude, and then E to extrude again. Let's just make it like that high and then E to extrude, R to rotate, G to grab, E to extrude, R to rotate, G to grab, E to extrude, R and G. So we're basically just making the pipe rotating up like that. Okay, and then E to extrude, kind of move it out. And then we wanna make that ending piece for the pipe again. So I'm gonna press E and then S, scale it up and then E to extrude, extrude it out, and there we go. So there is our pipe, um, but we wanna smooth it out, so let's go right over here to the modifiers. We're gonna click on add modifier, and then we can add the subdivision surface. And then let's turn the levels viewport and render both up to two. Now you can see it's very smooth right now, and so we wanna add some loop cuts to define where we want the edges to be sharp. So I'm just gonna tap into edit mode, and I'll press Control R, add a loop cut there. Control R, we can add a loop cut there. So I'm just gonna press Control R and then click and drag and add some loop cuts along here. And here as well, do the same thing for the top. Just kind of sharpen that up, add a loop cut there and there. And then we can go back into object mode and just shade this object smooth. And also if you wanted to, you could uh, press three for the face select. Just select these two faces right here and then just delete them. Because you're not gonna be seeing in the pipe, you're just gonna see the outside of the pipe. So you don't need a face there if you don't want one. All right, and then before we add these pipes into the scene, let's set up the material. So we already have a great material for this object. If you just click on the materials, I'm just going to add the rusty metal. So there is the rusty metal. We already used that over here on this one. There's the rusty metal. Now the problem with it right now is that it's way too detailed, like it's really small. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate the material and then I can just scale up the texture. So let's go over to the shading tab. So to duplicate the material, but keep the rest of the settings, I'm going to click right here on this kind of file icon. It looks like maybe a piece of paper. So I'm just gonna click on that. And now you can see it says Rusty Metal 001. So what I can do is just click on this and rename it to Pipes. 
and I have the caps lock on pipes. There we go. So now this metal, this is separate. This is the rusty metal and this one is the pipes. So if we change this now, it's not going to affect the other material. So what I can do now is right here on the mapping, just click, drag down, and then I can drag back and forth and I'm just going to scale it up and that looks a lot better. So that is about the size that I want. Maybe just maybe even make it a little bit smaller. So that is looking good. That is the size that I want. So I'm gonna go back to the layout here and then I can just go to top view and I can start to place this. So I wanna have two pipes over here, kind of going into this object. So I'll just scale it down, period on the number pad. We need to bring this way down here and just scale that down, put it into place. All right, there we go. I also want to press shift D and duplicate this and put another one kind of right over here. So let's take a look at that. All right, that is good. Let's also press shift D and duplicate this pipe. And I want to put the other pipe right over here on the other house, the square house. So I'll maybe scale it up, just stick it right in there, going into the ground and into the side of the house. And then I want to have two of them. So I'm just going to press shift D to duplicate and just stick the other one right there into place. All right, that is good. I'm also gonna add one more pipe. So I'm gonna press Shift D, duplicate that pipe, and then we'll just rotate it over. And I'm gonna put it into the dome. I think that would look good as well. So I'll just stick it into the dome there. And there you go. So you can see the different pipes. Maybe just move this guy out of the way. And if you want to delete these characters, you could. I'm just going to leave them because you can't see them in the render. And they give me a good visualization of how big the scene is. And you're not going to see them in the render. So I will just leave them in the scene. All right, and this is gonna wrap it up for part four of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying the series so far and thank you for watching. So if you wanna watch part five, the last part, in part five, we're going to be adding the rocks and the pebbles, and then we're gonna do some finalizing, just kind of making sure the lighting looks good and everything. We'll do some render settings, render that out, and then do some compositing to make the final image look really nice. So if you wanna watch the last part, part five, I will leave a link in the description and I'll also add a card there up on the end screen and you can click on that. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the last part.